Hello folks, tonight I am going after NGC7822 and I did this last year and it was even a top pick um, on Astrobit last year. I don't know how because I actually hated it. I'll show you it later but I'm going to redo it and I'm going to give it a lot more integration time and we'll see how it goes and right now I'm starting off with HA. I'm doing four minute exposures. Um, Let's see here, my mean readout is 8.30. Uh, the gain offset, I'm not sure why I can't click on it right now. Let's see, oh, event settings, let's see, yeah, there it is. Uh, gain 139, uh, offset 21. And that's how one image looks like so far after four minutes. And it's breezy out there right now. I can hear the wind uh, on my surveillance. And let's take a look at the guiding. Ugh. Look at that, because I just heard a big gust, and look what it just did. I'm absolutely sure this sub will be ruined. <laughs> oh, man, that sucks. And these are four-minute exposures, too. But I'm going to let it go. I'm going to take a look at it, and uh, let's see where it's at right now. I, I, see, I can hear it on my surveillance. I don't know if you can hear it from the camp from the, where I'm recording right now. It's still bad. Let's see a bit. Yeah. Rats. But you know what? The other day, it was averaging in the 15 mile per hour range. And it, it, it's worse today. But my guiding held up pretty well. And I was thinking, what's going on? How come my guiding is usually worse when it's that windy? And so I think my, my new cable management is definitely helping. It, it definitely helped on that other night, it, but it's, I don't know, <laughs> right now it just doesn't look great. Okay, I just finished an image. Let's go back and see if the stars got screwed up. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can see over there. Uh, Looked like they got a little bit uh, pregnant on the left side there, definitely. Oh, well. Um, let's take a look at my image history here. Uh, it did go from 203 to 221, and the star count uh, did dip a little bit. I don't know if that's directly related to that gust, but, yeah. Hmm. I'll decide later if I want to keep this frame, but... Probably not. I'm going to compare it to the others. Okay, well, I won't keep you. We'll see how the rest of this goes. See you later. So here I am, five days later. Couldn't do anything since then. And guiding is looking better today at 0.54. I'll take it. But I have a feeling I'm not going to finish this object for a few weeks. The weather here is just absolutely terrible. I hope tonight lasts for a little while. We'll see. Hey, I am back. Boy, that first part of the video you saw was recorded over a month ago. I finally finished capturing the data I needed for this object. And I think in all, I didn't add it all up, but I'm sure it's somewhere over 24 hours. And I have over 10 hours of HA, and that data looks pretty good. I didn't have to run an AVE or DVE on it. And... Oxygen didn't look very good. I actually ran um, both uh, um, a dynamic background extraction and an automatic background extraction to get it sort of even edge to edge. And, you know, I was capturing this data through a lot of haze, too. That didn't help either. Uh, did I mention? This is seven hours, I think, on the, the oxygen. And probably one other problem I'm facing with uh, some of my data is my flats are, uh, I think I captured flats back in September. I've been using the same flats for a long time because I've, I've never rotated my camera. I've never taken the camera off. So I think it's, it's probably due for a refresh. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Stever who's been telling me to try different ADU ranges and see if that fixes 
the brightness around my oxygen data because I always have brightness around there. My friend Jason has actually suggested the same thing that the brightness I have around my original stack data might be because of the flats. And I noticed someone else the other day who just had the same brightness I got. And he has the same astronomic oxygen filter and the same camera as I do. So I thought that was interesting. So, and uh, let's see, this is my sulfur data and I ran um, a DBE on this data. And I've already run the histogram on these. And also what I did is I ran a little bit of denoise on, on the SI, the sulfur, and the oxygen, uh, just to try and make the overall combine come out a little less, less noisy. And I, I think I like how the combine came, came out. Let me show you how that looks. All right, so this is what I did. And what I've been doing lately, as you already know, I use that SHO AIP script. But lately, I haven't been mixing the channels. I've been pulling, putting 100% sulfur in red, 100% HA in green, and 100% oxygen in blue for the Hubble palette. And it's been coming out pretty much the way I expect. I, I kind of like the tones I've got here because I know I can convert this, this orange or yellow to a more deeper gold and this sort of kind of greenish teal kind of color, I can get that over to blue and it's, it's and just changes magenta to something that more resembles the, the overall nebula and less purple. <laughs> and let me show you the, the different variations I went through here. So this is the first version and I, uh, before I took it over to a uh, Photoshop, I did do some more denoise on it. Um, uh, tried to make it a little more sharper and uh, and this is what I ended up doing in Photoshop and uh, you can see I've got a little more gold going on here and I, I made this uh, I don't I'm not even sure what kind of color that is more of a mixture of green and cyan maybe it comes out looking more like teal blue I'm not I'm not sure but this is the uh, the tone I want because after I get this far in Photoshop, I, I head back over to PixInsight and run an SCNR on it. And so it, the SCNR will take this color and poof, make my blue like magic. Now I've got my blue. And let's see here. Uh, I might have worked on the background. I'm not sure what this version is doing. Not much change is going on there. Oh, okay. Here, now I, I'm, I've rotated it, and it looks like I might have uh, made... I'm trying to remember. It wasn't even that long ago, just a couple hours ago. But it looks like I made this blue a little more bold in Photoshop. And uh, let's see here. I don't know why, but I do like... Some people may prefer this rotation, but for some reason, I like it this way. I don't know why. Maybe because it has a sort of a pointing upward kind of look. It just, I don't know, I guess I'm weird, but I like it like this. This framing is, it speaks to me. <laughs> okay, let's see the next version here. Okay, you can tell I made the, the yellow a little more gold. So you can sort of see that's the old one. And that's the new one. Oh, and this next one, look at the stars here and here. I, I, I tried to, you know, shrink them a little bit. Boom. How you like that? <laughs> I think I used, uh, I might have, I made a mask and I made them a little less bright. And then I tried to use clone stamp to remove the lensing that was around them. That was in Pics and Sight. I think I cropped a little bit off of it. You could tell again, here's the previous one, I made the, the gold even more gold. And this is it. This is my final version. So, do you like the final version? I think it's pretty good. I can live with it. I'll probably change my mind in a few days, but for now, 
I, I'm okay. So th this is this is the end. And let me show you uh, some other things here. So um, before I was able to finish it and capture my my sulfur data, I had enough. Um, HA and oxygen to do an HOO version where I put HA in uh, red and oxygen in green and blue and that's what the HA, the HOO image looks like, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, that's not too bad. I thought it had a cool kind of look to it. And it, it doesn't look fake. It, it looks like there's some realism to that photo, I thought. And then this is how it looks compared to the Hubble one I just worked on. And uh, I don't know. I like them both, actually. And you heard me complaining about um, my the one I did last year. <laughs> I don't know. It, it was taken with the same refractor, but um, the... And this is 15 hours of data compared to uh, over 24 hours of data on the left here. And plus the data on the left is using a reducer that increased the speed of light I'm taking in, so that's another plus. And I don't know, I even tried to go back to this data maybe a month or two ago to see if I could rework it and make it look better, and uh, maybe that was a couple months ago, and I just couldn't do anything with it. I don't know why, and that's why I decided to just recapture it from scratch. And I definitely like um, this one on, in the middle over the one on the right. Even though the one on the right with the top pick on Astrobin um, is, I don't, I I would lay money, I probably won't even get a top pick on the middle one because it's just everyone now is taking amazing images. So it's, it, <laughs> the game is getting harder to, to get any accolades, but I don't care if I'm happy with it. That's all that matters. And I'm definitely more happy with the one in the middle than the one on the right. Maybe a future project would be to combine all of the data here and make a super nebula. <laughs> that would be a lot of data. That would probably give me close to 40 hours. Now that would be interesting, but though if I find myself with another long drought with nothing but clouds, maybe I'll try that. So, okay, I've, I've done enough talking. Um, I hope I didn't bore you too much. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.